From the fall of 2005 to the spring of 2006, a killer was walking valley streets. Murder after murder after gruesome murder. Nine killings, eight rapes, kidnappings and robberies. Hundreds of police officers worked thousands of hours to catch the baseline killer. But the key to the case was something so small, you can't even see it with the human eye. Saliva, blood, and skin cells found at the crime scenes all contained DNA. That led investigators to Mark Godot. Who are you gonna believe? A lab extra with no criminal record or this ex-convict? Not surprisingly, in this, the only on-camera interview Godot has ever given, he insists the DNA evidence and analysis was shoddy and misleading. Let's just face it, let's be real with one another. People are ignorant when it comes to DNA. So they were like, oh, well, they got your DNA. Well, it must be you. Godot argues that if you look at the evidence, the police reports and the dates the DNA was analyzed, you'll see that Phoenix police actually cleared him before they suddenly identified him as the killer. The Phoenix Police Department crime lab tested Marks Godot STR DNA and I'm excluded from all items. CBS 5 investigates looked at the evidence, the reports and dates and found the Phoenix Police Crime Lab never tested Godot's Y STR DNA because the lab did not have the capability to test it. The state crime lab tested it and used it to identify Godot as the killer. It seems to all point to Mark. Why does it point to Mark? Wendy Carr is Godot's wife and his most ardent defender. She argues that the killer left so little DNA behind that it would be impossible to link it to her husband. Carr points to the case of Sofia Nunez. The only DNA evidence on her was the killer's saliva found on one of her breasts and that had been submerged in water for hours. And tiny drops of blood found on Godot's shoes and on a ski mask that link him to the shooting deaths of Nicole Gibbons and George Chow. Carr and Godot say there's no way to reliably test such small and contaminated samples. And it may be contaminated, the DNA may be degraded. But according to Frederick Zenhauser at the University of Arizona's College of Medicine in Phoenix, even tiny bits of saliva or blood can produce reliable results. If the analysis was done correct, what are the odds that it could be somebody Again, else? Again, the other, you know, one of a million, uh, you know, chance to, to, be, uh, to be wrong. With the evidence that was admitted in court, the chances the samples belong to someone else actually drop to one in 360 trillion. But that doesn't silence Godot. What can I say? I, I didn't do nothing. Or his wife. And, the, and it's not so much a question whose DNA is that, because it could be Mark's DNA. But really the question uh, is how did it get there? So you're arguing that he was set up? I'm arguing that there was a rush to arrest and after searching her house multiple times and not coming up with anything, they needed to do some damage control. It sounds hard to believe. For their story to be correct, it would require a conspiracy involving the largest task force in Phoenix police history, detectives, the crime lab, and the prosecutors. And when you take a look at all of the ways the DNA links Godot to the murders and rapes, Godot's theory is the one without any evidence.